Producer stated that this is Matthew, a three-pronged Matthew refractor, so that is helpful for that gentle delegation of the anal canal. Not in, please not in this single attempt. Yeah, please. After that, what says Dr. Ravin, what we have to do is just put the gap inside the anal canal. Of and course, slowly withdraw it. So he found where is the virus. Yeah, of course, in the uh, CPSL has stated in last cases, it will be open on them. Use the gauze for that. So fecal contamination will not come, number one, and the vision will be clear. So you will feel happy. And if you. Proctoscope. Yeah, video. Video and a proctoscope. So we will use the video. Okay, ready? Yes, sir. Now, put the stop down. Sir. Put the stop down. 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 Put Pain free, minimal, invasive procedure is a choice. Not Milligan Morgan, Ferguson said to mark techniques taking the back seat. So, this is a, this is a common message for that people. Otherwise, Milligan Morgan, Ferguson, pain is very severe. And your patients will, will disturb your sleep in night. So, that the laser. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But yeah, you are right in grade four. But initially, this is a grade three tag piles, and the rest is one or two. I'll show in that particular stuff. Right. Go. Yeah, this is a anusco made by this metallic. No. Focus. Focus. Yes, light off. Light off. Light off. Light off. Yeah, you can see focus properly. Yeah, we are in the back turn, you can see. Now coming outside. Sir, 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 I'm ready. Okay. Sir, please go find this. Rectal nipona, rectal. The vertical column of Morgan, you can see that. See that. This is the beauty of this endoscope. You can see vertical column of Morgan. Yeah, this is a yeah, grade uh, 2 and the uh, 3 o'clock and uh, this is a 6 o'clock, 6 or 7. Yeah, and one is a bigger one, chunk, is a 11 o'clock, but this grade 3 happens. Yeah. So this is a basically, you can record by the device. This is, this is a benefit of this device. So my plan is, in, uh, in my government hospital medical college in the 
we are doing uh, this laser procedure totally free of cost. Somebody has donated the machine to my department so that we are doing fistulas <coughs> and the hemorrhoids, pyrrhon sinus, free of cost in, in, in that medical college. So my choice in this particular case, the HA with the hematoplasty by laser. Yeah. So your first, uh, first step is going to be do HA? Yeah, of course. Uh, so that we are doing the studies in, the, in my department, there's a PG resident studies for that. A comparative studies between the HA with laser and laser without the HA. So that we can assess the efficacy and the result of the both procedures. Another question is that for Titan. So again, I am not uh, searching this uh, petroscope because it's maybe to the reason. The HL before the laser and the HL after the laser. There are two topics. The Kalyanka, Dr. Kalyanka, I am trained from Dr. Kalyanka and he, he has given a statement regarding that. So please do first laser because your laser cut the your HL, HL suture. This is it. This is it. Idea regarding the HL and the, this laser. But in my practice, when we do first laser, what happens sometimes, especially in low hemoglobin patients, especially in low immunocompromised patients, CLD patients, they develop the hematoma. And after the hematoplasty by this laser, with hematoma, HL is not possible. So that I'm doing the HL first, then laser. Right. Give me. So just as a vascularity is concerned, we will go one or two centimeters above the this dented line. Yeah, give me. Suture laser. Using the Suture PDS, PDS or bike it. It depends on availability of the material. Yeah. Please focus inside. So just you can, you can see that we have a dented line before. So maximum girth is 5 mm. We will take it 5 mm. Not just for these elements. Not for these. Not for these. See that? Can you see the dented line, sir? Sir, I can see the vertical column of the mall dragonese and of the taking back to other person. And taking the... No, that is not. No, that is not. Three and four ML penetrations and figure eight. Actually, I am taking this figure eight. You can use the Doppler too for the assessing the total targeting the vessels. Again, so, uh, light source is not popular. Yeah, please, uh, yeah, somebody focus. Yeah, yeah, camera focus, karo, light source focus, karo, kuch de do. Yeah. Dikha, yeah. Skin the skin, yeah. skin. Yeah. 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 Focus, 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 so actually it's a very wonderful procedure, only using the, this suture material and uh, maximum piles, even grade 4 will be, will be shrink. No, I just can ask questions. Sir. Sir, sir. Yeah, please. Even this is very fond of answering your queries. <laughs> Sir, sir. Have some queries. Sir, please, sir. Please, sir. Please. You can ask anything. Please, two karo, you can ask two karo. Sir, you can ask two karo, you can ask two karo. Sir, HL, basically, we are above the dented line. As principally, Dhu Patak sir here, innovator, CP Kothari sir here, our teacher, and Nigam sir here. Above the dented line, as a post-graduate student, above the dented line, is a pale-less zone. So, above this, and so many journals have published the all studies on the color doctor based studies on that. 
the vascularity is just above one centimeter above this dented line. So we have to target this that. The Dr. Chipte has mentioned the two layer repairs and this is a chair is a one layer repair. Not a, exactly one layer, just a targeting the vessels. The hemorrhoid artery 3, 7 and 11 o'clock positions. The one is finished. It's a 10 minute procedure. Look at the hospital. Oh. Gangoriya sir. Yes sir. Uh, Michael Dr. Shagar from Gwalia. Sir, sir, please. Uh, sir, uh, in this case, HL can be achieved by laser or laser? Yeah. Uh, only HL is a very effective procedure. Only yeah. HL. But uh, in, our, in our studies, we are doing completely between the both procedures. HL as well as this laser. But sir, as far as the left, yeah. Basically, now any robust data now available for that in favor of the laser, so that by the laser procedure, the laser procedure, you are going to burn the mucosa, and after that, the patient will develop ulcers over the mucosa, and it is not going to. So best way to do the hemorrhoid stabilization is by the hemorrhoid Yeah, very true. HL is a very good procedure. No, no. The doctor is you can come out of the So and if you break your finger, you palpate the section of the coronal artery, it is always better to do the doctor Nigami. Sir, to be very frank, if you see all the processes, I am not talking about any single procedure. What the all surgical or office procedures need to do? They do. We are targeting people. Either we are removing the tissue, hemorrhoid, that is hemorrhoidal panel, or we are doing de-artilization. Our third thing is we are fixing the anal cushion to the above level as in doing uh, MIPH or QDS. If we are uh, applying sclerosin, what it will do? It will create an inflammatory reaction around the hemorrhoid and vessel and it generates a fibroblast which shrinks over the uh, hemorrhoid uh, artery and produces the de-artilization. So what is our definition or whatsoever? The idea is to produce de-artilization. Similarly, de-artilization you can achieve by this all and by the laser also the laser energy around the uh, hemorrhoidal artery, it will produce inflammatory reaction. What the principle of uh, laser is? Laser is doing uh, photocoagulation and photoevaporation. Photo it breaks the hydrogen bond and oxygen bond of the water and it evaporates. That is photo And at the same time, it yeah, generates the heat to cause the photo coagulation. So, the laser itself is a tool to achieve the deartilization. So, you can achieve the deartilization by laser, by coagulation, by sclerosis, by deartilization, or by Sir, after the HL, Nigam sir, am I audible? Yes sir. Yeah, after the, this uh, HL, I am proceeding again for this uh, laser hematoplasty. So just then, what is your plan, doctor? I mean, how much energy you are going to yeah, be in part? Yeah, this is the principle, the formula for that, the grade 1, 150 joule. Grade 2, 250, grade 3, 350, grade 4, 452.
So this is on 8 watt. On 8 watt. For each pile mass. Pardon sir? For each pile mass. No, no, no. Yeah. no. yeah, it will depend on the grade. So this is a grade, grade 3, we will do 350. Right? ऑफ़ द so your energy, your sight will be perfect, so that your complication will be less. Which fiber you are going to use? Yeah, this Say, is a bare fiber or polycarbonate? Yeah, this is a bare fiber. I will use the bare fiber. And uh, see that, this is an interspectric plane. I can palpate the, this. And this is the external spectre. So identification is by the palpation technique. What will be the, your side for both of uh, this? Is this, is a this is a 11 o'clock position uh, mass. I will insert through that and base above the dented line and base of the, this this uh, uh, this mass. We will we will uh, we will fire this uh, laser and before the inserting through that introspective plan, we will go we will go for the scaling. The space scaling of the this fiber, so that uh, that will be shrink for that. Okay. Ice, sir, please. Ice. Ha, ice ready. Fiber prepare. Sir, cut. 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 And fire it. So they are right, sir. Uh, and uh, by Dr. Kalyankar, so I am following and uh, I am doing regularly with Dr. Kalyankar technique. And it's very safe technique, sir. No complications. It's a very safe technique, I agree with you. But the only precaution is that I have seen few patients in which they become incontinent after the laser hemorrhagopexy. It was done uh, in a trans way because uh, while entering into the trans way because uh, while entering into that area they continue to fire the laser energy and damage the sphincters. Uh, it may be possible, sir. So for that, uh, the surgeon should be properly trained. So you are telling is a so is a a major precaution yeah. while passing that fiber through the sphincter is don't fire the laser energy. Yeah. And give a small puncture in the skin by right. 11 number 9 so that you don't get any force entering into the area. Yeah, of course, sir. And uh, the vessels present in subcutaneous, submucosal area so that we have to target the submucosal area, not the inspectors. So I'm just uh, setting on it. Machine, dikhai hai. Machine, dikhai hai. Machine, Eight watt. So that above the dented line, I will give the. Give a banana. Sir, it's not. Yes. Give a banana. Yes. Yes. We are still doing scanning so that vessel will be constricted. And this also has been the shrink. Okay. We have given the 80 joule here. Ice there, yeah, ice. Ice, I don't know. That is the interspectric joint. You can see the light. You, the yes, light. Right. you can see yes, light. Can see so this light. is a, we are the far from the specter. Mm -hmm. I will deliver the energy 350. Yes. Okay, 350 yes. Okay. Yes. Are you ready? 
In that period, the woman is constipated most of the times, and the fetal head compresses on the in the pelvis and causes more problem. And there is a venous condition also. There is venous condition also. So we have to address the constipation first. We have to address the diet and lifestyle management. They should lie on the left side to relieve the pelvic pressure. Evidence focus level four and level eight. Micro nice purified. Right press कर दिया देखो 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 right press कर दिया � लिखा हुआ है तो बोल रहा हूँ। Hemorrhoids in special situation in the portal hypertension because portal hypertension is a problematic thing and you have to differentiate between the pile mass and the rectal varices. If you try to treat the rectal varices as hemorrhoid, you will be in severe problem and it will be a difficult problem. So most of the time it ends up in a medical management of the portal hypertension. That addresses the thing, but if the if the pile mass is the main problem and rectal varices are not, the rubber band ligation is okay with them or stable hemorrhoid hemorrhoidopexy are good option for managing after managing their coagulopathies. Hemorrhoid in children. Uh, first thing is hemorrhoids are uncommon in children, and the more common thing which leads to bleeding PR is polyps. So sigmatoscopy to rule out the polyp are much more common, which are much more common. The dietary modification in the children and the toilet training and address the constipation that help the patient stop bleeding and their address their symptom. Non-surgical office procedure may be reserved with the conservative management phase because in my whole career I have operated only two children for large pile masses. Otherwise, most of the children get treated by the conservative management. Uh, uh, this is an al algorithm for that. If there is a great, great day, I'm right. Diet and life, life modify, lifestyle modification is okay. Or the medical therapy is okay. If it fails, the non-surgical office procedures, the non-surgical office procedures are recommended. For grade two hemorrhoids, the diet and lifestyle modification and the MPFF is the first line of treatment. Then the non-surgical office procedure. If it fails, then the surgical procedures which can be selected as for the recommendation. For grade three, the office procedures are okay for the patients who are not fit for surgery, but most of them require surgery. And for grade four, most of the patient requires. So I conclude by saying that as hemorrhoidal disease is one of the most common element, its improper management brings disrepute to the discipline of, discipline of surgery as such and proper selection of the treatment, modality and counselling of patient is of utmost importance. Also consider the job profile of the patient because if the patient loses a job after your surgery, he will be the most unhappy person. And, uh, Always counsel the patient that there are 5 to 10 percent chance of recurrence if your lifestyle is not okay. If you persist to have the habit of straining in the toilet, if you persist to have constipation, so they must be counseled so they are not unsatisfied. But give them a reasonable promise of the treatment. So on this word point day, I thank you very much for pushing this thing. If you have any questions, I hope. I am happy to answer that. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Kothari has really made it a very simple way of telling the variety of the presentations and the cases right from the pediatric to geriatric. And you know this annoying disease which is in chronic in nature and it needs patient selection as well as the selection of the procedures. So give a good results. We have we need a good uh, detailed anatomical understanding as well as the procedural benefits all over. So thank you very much. Any questions? Is open is always open. Sir, one question. 
if you are having a patient of grade 3, uh, grade 3 C variety of hemorrhoids, this is grade 3 circumferential involvement. And you, if you are having all the gadgets in your OP, what the procedure would you like to use particularly for that patient? For circumferential hemorrhoids, my preference is always a stepped hemorrhoid affix. That addresses the whole thing. My first treatment, my first line preference is that. You is here. Will be yeah. Take basically is totally against the stepper hemorrhoid of vaccine. No, 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 no. Your point, your comments are particular. Somebody should tell me one reason to do stepper hemorrhoid of vaccine. One positive reason against stepper. Only one reason. I will start hemorrhoid of vaccine from stepper from tomorrow. Because now uh, in the era of the Google. Patient demands that you do the step. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the reason I give you that it's less painful and the patient returns to his job early and it's an effective treatment. Same with your test. So my question is a patient pretending to improve his training data five. Maybe grade two or grade three. What would be the instant management? Directly to the office procedure, surgery, or conservative management like... Uh, most... Of, I got to your point. Here, most of the hemorrhoidal bleeding is self-limiting. So it stops on its own. So you give... You address his constipation, make him comfortable, <coughs> and also give him this uh, MBFF, and wait for some time. If it is grade 2, it will stop by itself, and... If it doesn't, or if it is causing anemia, then you have to operate. Only, only, sorry. My question is, what is that uh, threshold? Anemia, and what do you Because there are many of the patients come with a 5 gram of hemoglobin. So there is no choice. There is no choice. But if the patient is bleeding and is scared, and is maintaining his hemoglobin around 13, 14, there is no, there is no hurry. Because what happens, there are two, three drops of bleeding in the toilet seat. It spreads and he feels that there is a lot of bleeding. But actually it is not a lot of bleeding. You should have documented that he is a embryo for what. Only one last question from all of us. How to go ahead with portal hypertension? It is really fearsome. In, yes. in half a minute or one minute, uh, right from beginning to end. So you have to identify what are the rectal varices. They are the big veins. They are very unlike, they are not present at the hemorrhoidal masses. They are above the hemorrhoidal masses. So you see the very big blue veins all around the rectum. So you have to treat the portal hypertension, reduce the, don't, don't try to treat the rectal varices. Because once I have, Burned my fingers, I have not seen the patient and I was called to do a Delorme procedure in that patient and that was a portal hypertension. I gave incision and then realized that it was a nightmare for me to, to control that bleeding. So, so always see that. But if there are bile masses along with the portal hypertension, you can ligate them, you can, you can treat them like a normal but you must identify between the varices and the pile muscles. Thank you, Potai sir. Let's continue for such a Thank you, Potai sir, for such a lecture. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful presentation. I now, I now request Dr. Paraman, sir, to felicitate Dr. C.P. Kothari, sir.
I request Dr. Tarun Kumar Senior sir to please felicitate Dr. Paramahan sir. I request Dr. Priya Kashwama ma'am to please felicitate Dr. Swarata Brahmachari ma'am. इसे हाँ करना। इसे मैं भी आ रहा हूँ। तो आपके सामने तो नहीं है। I request Dr. Shyam Dilwan sir to please felicitate Dr. Manish Ram sir. वही सर। हाँ सर वो बीच बीच में पहन। थैंक यू सर। मूवी कौन? अब नेक्स्ट स्पीकर इस डॉक्टर अरविंद धनुरिया सर। एक्चुअली यार डॉक्टर पीआई इस हियर एंड शी हैज बाद अ लॉट for this entire workshop along with his uh, along with her uh, colleagues and she would like to felicitate all the members those who have worked hard in the operation theater uh, please call them on the members and big round of applause for them because they were very great award for this operation workshop
no, not a single patient written back with the ambulance within, within one year. So this is a, my belief that the laser may be a good option. But now, studies, at least more than 500 years, 1000 years will require for the establishment of this laser techniques. This is a, a healing phase, after four weeks, laser technique, step, as mentioned by the uh, Dr. Rajiv Sarkar sir. Fibbing group, uh, we have used in um, Fichula, the success rate is very poor, less than 50%. This is a not a good idea. There are several old techniques, and Ipset and Ma, and the sir has mentioned that this, this may be a good assisting tool, but not, not as a results like it is. Thank you so much for patience here. Thank you very much sir for a nice presentation. Did uh, just briefly about the parallel sinus. What we talked about was the sinus only. Nobody decided not about the pile of it yet. It's very important for uh, being nerve uh, I always keep the hair first before I recommend surgery. I asked my dermatologist friend to try to take care of the hair first before I offer surgery to be honest. Because everybody deals with the sinus but we correct the pile of it, the pile of nitrogen. And here, but it is the main cause of it. So, after so I always ask for my I always ask the dermatologist first to take care of the back, the hair of that area, and then I open it. Sir, how much time do you wait for it then? How many sittings for it? Normal, normally, they take three to four sittings, depending upon the amount of hair. That's why you don't find it. The surf actually is more common between 15 to 40 because of the hormonal. No, that's the time when you get the hairs off. That's the reason why you have to be honest. And after 40, you will not have lost my hair after 40. So, <laughs> there is no hair. So, how can we have a parental inside? One thing, so, so, so the main reason, we deal with sinus, sinus, sinus. We don't bring the hair. Number one. Number two is the obesity which he mentioned. That is very, very important. I have had occurrences in people who are obese. And if you don't deal with that, obviously you will have it. My, yeah, one, uh, one more point regarding this issue. Here, removing cream after the surgery. Yes, sir. When you put the hair removing cream, so it, it will work one month. Again, one month is plenty. So that it is effective. Within two months, and for the further life, it may be reconnect. Obesity, hair control, and, and sitting, more sitting, it is a record of that. So we have to control it. The man question is regarding this. No, earlier, what teaching was that parental is a middle line, this thing. Yeah. The principle of surgery was lateralization of this midline. Yeah, of that was the fifth thing. How do you find that in the laser? No, no it's not in the laser. Laser, laser. basically, it's a clear piece. It's a laser clear. It's a suture line pressure. There is not a suture line. In laser, there is nothing. There, there is a, you have to lateralize the whole. The point was the laser. The cavity will fill the gap. You have to fill the dimple to fill the gap. And cavity will be collapsed. In this case, once we have removed the laser, then we can have a laser. To fill the gap, it is to uh, decrease the uh, depth of the interglutial tract. The purpose of all this lab surgery is to fraternize the interglutial tract. I think that I am here observing that there are many girls who do not have hair but they have violated hair. <laughs> <laughs> I will answer that. So if you see these girls, they will have more than one opening. There is a pyrometric dimple there. Now you will always find, they will always talk about sinus, but it is not a sinus, there will be more than one sinus. They will call one primary sinus and there will be another one there. So the main infection goes from this. You will see, a lot of people will have more than one dimple. A lot of these girls will have more dimple. And then it will deform it. That's why they are recommended. It's a no oxygen sinus. There are more than 10 individual diagnoses of this. Thank you, Doctor. I will very nicely you your, presented your topic of general disease. So, message is clear. Main culprit is hair. Irrespective of whatever procedure you take up, you have to clear the hair, test from there, and you have to retard the hair, and whatever procedure you take up, whether a flap or a closure or the uh, laser procedure. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you, sir, for the excellent presentation. I would now like to request Dr. Mani Kosaya, sir, to please felicitate Dr. Arvindhan Gurya, sir. This is one of the best, which I will definitely like to take home. Sir, you have to take both home. I would like to request Dr. Priya Kushwaha, ma'am, to please felicitate Dr. Rajiv Sharda, sir. Sir, Rajiv is here. Why the anatomy is important? 
important after seeing all the procedures uh, like. So I will continue from where I am. I started with the four pushes. Thereafter, I described how the uh, anal canal develops. Upper one is developed by the endoderm, uh, lower two third is developed by the ectoderm. Then I uh, described the significance of dentate line already. Then uh, I described the, how the uh, all uh, four layers of the uh, small intestines, <coughs> yeah, mucosa, submucosa, circular muscle fiber, and longitudinal muscle fiber here. This uh, we have already discussed. Uh, we talked about the uh, longitudinal muscle fibers. Uh, it behaves uh, in a different way and uh, in the uh, colon it spreads out of uh, aggregate uh, in the three pines to form the tinea coli and again it converts uh, uh, spread out to form a complete circular ring at the rectum. Up to this point we have uh, discussed. So uh, as far as the serosal covering is concerned in the, in the upper one third uh, serosa is covered the uh, rectum, but lower two third is uh, without the serosal covering. In German, they used to call it rectum, hot rectum, hot, means covered or uncovered. And what is the significance of this? Any processor, if you do posteriorly, it is safe. It, uh, the infection will not reach to the peritoneum. So, peritonitis will not happen. So importance of this is that particularly if you are doing aeroplasty, do it posteriorly, 6 o'clock position, if necessary, further give a incision and uh, aeroplasty, do it 3 o'clock position and uh, 9 o'clock position, but don't try to do it at 12 o'clock position. So this is the importance of the uh, presence of uh, serosal covering or present. Then uh, what is the longitudinal muscle fiber? Is it the continuation of external sphincter? Uh, but uh, remember, the longitudinal muscle is in small, small intestine is supplied by the autonomic nervous system. And the external sphincter in anal canal is supplied by the somatic nerves. It is having a voluntary control. So this is the basic difference. So you can't say that External sphincter is the continuation of longitudinal muscle fiber. So where it goes, how the external sphincter forms, what the fate of longitudinal muscle fiber. To give the, uh, explain this, different uh, others are having different concepts. If I will go on in detail of this, it will be a, a very long discussion. So, now we see the anatomy from the above, there are three muscles. There are three muscles, Ichyopoxygeus, Pubopoxygeus and uh, this Pubopoxygeus uh, and Pubopoxygeus muscle. These three forms the uh, uh, total base of the pelvis. All the organs are uh, set on this and there are three openings in this. One for the rectum, one for the urethra, one for the vagina. And below to this is the anal canal. If we see from the lower side, this picture is particularly important if you are doing the third degree repair for uh, obstetric trauma. This is the posterior triangle which contains only the opening of uh, anal canal. These are the levator muscles, pubo rectus, 
oxygen, red, this uh, is the perineal body and it is, it is the genital compartment. Now we see it from the above. From above, this muscle is, is uvocoxygeous, uh, uh, uvocoxygeous, and here there are two muscles. This is pyriformis muscles and this is the obturator internal muscle. It forms the covering or a base at the lateral uh, wall of the pelvis. And the important muscle is the levator and I. If you want to fail your student in MS examination, ask him which is the muscle which originated the same place and inserted at the same place. One is this and which is the another. If I ask you which is the another muscle which originated at the same place and inserted at the same place. Another is the uh, cremastic muscle. These are the only two muscles which originate and inserted at the same place. And it forms a loop. And this loop serves a very thick function. It gives a 70 degree angle to the aortic junction. When it remains tight, it gives a 70 degree angle. So it uh, provides the pieces to come down. And when the person get up, uh, pass the motion, it turn to the 180 degree after relaxation of this muscle. In a colorectal conference, when a speaker asks how many of you while doing PR examination ask the patient to stand for the motion and to stop the motion. While doing PR examination, how many of you are doing this? Two of our surprise, only two hands up. Thus, yes, I am doing it. Why? What is the importance of this? Because at the time of defecation, this muscle should be relaxed. If you ask the patient, uh, this you palpate in the anorectal sling. If you ask the patient to uh, stay for the motion, and if you find that this muscle in place of relaxing, it contracting, this is a case of obstructive dedicated syndrome. At the time of constricting, uh, uh, means stopping the motion, it should contract. So if it is relaxing, it can be of some degree of incontinence. So this muscle is very, very important for the continuous. So to relax this person is to adopt the squatting position. Until unless he will not adopt the squatting position, this pure rectus will not relax. If you say that one is going to enter the English toilet, no matter. If you calculate the angle, it will remain the same. Even the animal adopts the same angle to pass the motion. So, squatting position is equally important for the motion. Now comes the second question is this. This is the eupoxygeous uh, and eupoxygeous muscles. They merge together and this is the eupoxygeous muscle which is little bit lower to this. And it gives the muscle uh, some fibers to the the sphincter of the urethra is what is in between the vagina and the rectum also. This is the reason. If person is to pass the motion, he is to pass the urethra. It is not possible at all to uh, pass the pieces without passing the urethra. Here lies the answer that there is some communication between the pure rectus muscle and the uh, you uh, uh, sprinkle of the urethra. Now we uh, are leaving all the theories apart, we adopt the Golliger's theory. Golliger is the patient of the anorectal uh, surgery. Uh, this is the cut section and uh, this is the internal sprinkler. No problem, it is a continuation of the circular muscle fibers. And this is the levator ani. And lower to this is the external uh, sphincter. 
So, no problem. Internal sphincter is there. Continuation of the circular muscle fibers. And external sphincter is under voluntary control. When you stop the motion, you contract this muscle, not this. And to our surprise, 80% continuous of the canal uh, is being taken care of by internal sphincter. What is the significance of internal sphincter? I already demonstrated you live that the external sphincter come downward more than internal sphincter. Length of the length of anal uh, canal is uh, 4.5. This gap is 0.5 centimeter. This I uh, measured during uh, while I, I was doing the uh, analysis. So if you want to enter in between the external and internal sphincter space, you have to reach 0.5 centimeter above to the uh, inner verge. Otherwise, if you think that the external internal sphincter is up to here and I have to cut it and give the little internal sphincter running, you will cut the external sphincter and produce the continuous something to the patient. And the length of uh, dented line I already explained it is 3 centimeter if the length of the canal is 4.5 centimeter. And the above to dented line is 1.5 centimeter. So total length of the anal canal is 4.5 to 5 centimeters. Now what is the, where the uh, longitudinal muscle fiber gone? We come to the conclusion that external sphincter is not a continuation of uh, longitudinal muscle fiber. Longitudinal muscle fiber comes here. And not only it intervenes between the external and internal sphincter, it, it encases the internal sphincter. This is called mucosa, uh, submucosa ni. And it gives a uh, communication with the mucosa and the dentate line. This is called the ligament of 